welcome to Connected, the bilingual space we use to connect with other people's realities, experiences and lifestyles, people that find themselves anywhere in the world. My name is Fabiana Espinosa and I will be guiding you through today's journey from Santa Cruz, Bolivia in South America. I'd like to remind you that you do not only see us through the Abbey Ayala channel, but you can also follow us through Facebook, Twitter, and later on when the show is over on our YouTube channel. Today's topic takes us to the world of plants and their benefits. We all have been somewhat exposed to the magic of plants. When we happen to experience a difficult digestion, let's say, someone might tell you have a chamomile tea. Or if we are having a hard time falling asleep, they might advise you to drink a lavender tea. So, in a way, we all have experienced herbs or plants to alleviate some discomfort. Therefore, we all use herbal medicine. To talk about this and more specifically about one plant that has been causing serious commotion lately, which is the case of hemp and its specific compound CBD, I invited Dr. Peter Swans, who will be connected with us from Kentucky in the US. Before we connect with Dr. Peter Swans, let's meet him. Dr. Swans is a naturopathic physician with advanced training in classical homeopathy and nutrition. Dr. Peter Swans received his doctorate of naturopathic medicine degree from the Southwest College of Naturopathic Medicine in Tempe, Arizona. He is board certified and a fellow of the Homeopathic Association of the Naturopathic Physicians. He uses the most gentle and efficient means available to stimulate the body's own self-healing mechanisms. His naturopathic training includes Western botanicals, nutrition and supplements, naturopathic physical medicine, homeopathy, Chinese medicine and acupuncture, and hydrotherapy. Dr. Swans specializes in homeopathy, pediatrics, and family medicine. He was awarded the prestigious Daphne Bladen Award for his commitment to naturopathic medicine, academic excellence, compassion, perseverance, a loving sense of humor, and a positive, supportive outlook by his colleagues and staff at SCNM. He currently supports individuals on the journey to health through his vital force naturopathic practice, integrating the best of his conventional and holistic medical training. He is passionate about healing and is driven by the desire to see all people be the most healthy an individual can be. It is my pleasure today to introduce Dr. Peter Swans, who is talking to us all the way from Kentucky in the US. Dr. Peter Swans, thank you so much for taking the time to be with us uh, this moment and also for uh, being open to come and clarify a lot of doubts and a lot of things that have been said about um, CBD. What I really want to try to do uh, with your interview is kind of going from very general to specific. So let's first, I want to first start asking you, what is herbal medicine? Um, herbal medicine or botanical medicine is utilizing, you know, any sort of plant or vegetable or berries even matter to try to facilitate or support the healing processes of the body. These are very, um, a lot of these are very old practices. In the US, there was a group of practitioners, they were called the eclectic 
you know, traveled across the United States. They didn't have doctors, you know, traveling with them. A lot of people didn't have medical training, so they had to utilize what was in the environment around them. And there's a ton of medicine um, around us in plant form. Right. And also, let me ask you, how did you, how did your path lead you towards herbal medicine? Well, you know, so I'm a naturopathic physician. I have always been interested in helping and healing people, but I knew that there were limitations with the conventional model because it's so focused on disease diagnosis and symptoms, and it didn't really look at the whole person. So for me, I became interested in a different approach for medicine, which led me to a naturopathic medical school, a four year medical school in the US and then botanical herbal medicine is one of the modalities that we are trained in. So that's sort of how I got into it. It wasn't something I grew up with. It was something that my mom or dad exposed me to as a child. I see. Okay, so now let's go to what I was really, really, um, because a lot, ha a lot have been said about CBD. Please tell us, what is CBD? So, so CBD, when we're talking about CBD today, we're primarily talking about a botanical derivative from cannabis or the hemp plant, right? And CBD is very, it's become a very exciting and hot topic in the botanical herbal community. Many governments are, are relaxing their regulation on this plant and we're recognizing technology how valuable it can be for our health um, and it's not something that people should be arrested and locked away for trying to use right and tell us about what are the benefits of using cbd well you know this is something this is an area that it's really going to continue to expand because there has been so much regulation and limitation on the research utilizing cannabis to see what it can do for the body. You know, we're really just scratching the surface of the potential. What I think is really unique about CBD and kind of differentiates it from other botanicals is that we have a internal cannabinoid system. It's called the endocannabinoid system. We produce cannabinoids in our body that interact with this system. We don't need to take these from the outside. We produce them on the inside. We have CB1 and CB2 receptors. Exogenous CBD, meaning it's taken from outside of the body, like the CBD derived from cannabis or hemp, it seems to help potentiate the system that we already have. So it's like we take this uh, CBD derived from hemp and it seems to make the CBD system in our body work more effectively. And what's beautiful about this is the CBD system in our body works as a sort of regulatory mechanism. It helps to regulate other systems and processes in the body. So the CBD it's almost, it's not really directly lowering inflammation and helping with pain, but it's helping to modulate our own inflammatory and pain system. The CBD may not directly be tonifying the immune system, but it can help our immune system to be more balanced. So there's really something unique about that, right? Very, very seldom do I get excited about some particular botanical thinking that it's going to be this magical you know uh, supplement that everybody will benefit from but cbd is a is a is a is a type of herbal supplement that the i think we're just scratching the surface of the potential and i think it could you know be valuable for a lot of people today in a way that other botanical supplements aren't right and I feel like what you just said makes so much sense because like CBD, as you said, it, it helps you ease pain. In which cases specifically 
would you uh, recommend or would you saw people using successfully CBD? Well, so here's the thing that I want to say, you know, in my own practice, I work with every patient holistically. And so, you know, I don't just recommend supplements to my patients. We're also going to talk about their diet and how are the ways that they're eating foods contributing to inflammation in their body. We're going to talk about their exercise and what are the ways they can help their body recover from the physical stresses it's under through work or life to help get inflammation more in check. We're going to talk about sleep and how important it is to get a restful night's sleep and to really work on healing our adrenals to get in inflammation in check. We're going to talk about omega-3s and you know everybody needs these essential fatty acids. Having a good ratio of omega-3s and omega-6s helps to modulate inflammation. So me personally, I don't I don't give CBD to every patient that comes in my door. And I don't recommend CBD necessarily as the first line for inflammation. And the reason is because I know that the person I'm talking to has other areas in their life that they need to make changes as well. And so my approach is always to address health holistically. What's beautiful about the CBD again is that it helps to impact the way the body's own systems are functioning. So it has the potential to help the body self-balance or self-regulate, maybe even unintentionally, right? Like we may say, hey, we're gonna give you this CBD because you are dealing with some pain, but it may help the endocrine system function a little better. Um, and that's the trick with health, is working with the individual and pulling all of the various pieces together. I see. And uh, in which ways can a person use or intake CBD? What are the difference between the different mat methods? Well, you know, typically, so you always want to, we're, we're concerned about what the dose is. And typically people will either use like a tincture, a liquid. So like, this is a company that I like, it's called Onyx and Rose. This is a liquid, there's two ounces total with a thousand milligrams in the two ounce bottle right and so depending on how much you fill up the dropper that adjusts the dose so the liquid is really nice because you can change the dose in a very incremental way as needed you can try with uh you know around 10 milligrams to start which is about half of a dropper um and then if you needed more you could fill up the full dropper and you'd be getting closer to 20 milligrams right also you can get cbd in capsules this is um or actually i'm sorry i don't have any capsules this is a this is a topical bomb but but for me what i was going to say for supplementation it would tend to be liquid or capsules and capsules you know they may come in a 10 milligram a 25 milligram and it really depends on where we're starting i always tend to tell people like start with a 10 milligram kind of consistently, maybe at night before bed, a lot of people are interested in CBD to maybe help with sleep and to help buffer some anxiety they're dealing with. So a 10 milligram at night before bed is a really good dose to kind of see how things work. Um, if we're dealing with somebody that has seizure disorders, they're gonna need significantly more CBD. If it's a uh, you know, patient that's doing something with uh, you know cancer and wondering if CBD might be a good piece of that puzzle, we're probably going to be doing much higher doses of the CBD. I see. And how does CBD work in different types of patients, let's say children and adults? Like you just uh, mentioned adult um, dosery, but how about children? Can CBD be used on uh, children's treatment? You, I definitely think CBD can be used with children and it's one of those things where you want to make sure that you have a really high quality product, right? So we talk about the CBD and we talk about the THC um, being derived from the cannabis plant or the marijuana plant. It's the THC which is the psychoactive component. It primarily binds to the um, CB1 receptors in the brain. There's some concern with 
THC exposure to young children. Um, you know, I don't think the research is very, it's not definitive exactly on what it says, but if I was going to put a child or have one of my daughters, for example, using CBD, I would want to make certain that it is a product that does not have any THC in it. We want 0.0% THC. And this is where, you know, consumers need to be cautious because we're talking about plant derived medicine and it's not regulated in the same way that pharmaceutical drugs are. It's certainly possible to get a CBD product that does have some of the THC in it. And I think a recent study came out and was looking at products on the market and they found about 20% of the products on the market may have detectable THC in it. And that could be enough THC to, to have somebody fail a drug test, right? Like that's a big deal right. um, with your job. So that, that's, a, that's a big part of the reason why I like this company. And what's really unique, what they've done they have here, this is the broad spectrum. And what that means is it has all of the cannabinoids derived from the hemp plant processed down to have 0.00 THC. There is no THC in this. Legally, companies, legally though, companies can sell CBD derived from hemp with up to 0.3% THC. So they also sell a full spectrum CBD, which has that 0.3%. If I was working with children, I would not use the full spectrum and I would make sure that they had a CBD with no THC. Right, and that clarifies the whole idea. It's really about to see uh, the different uh, percentage of what comes on CBD, correct? Well, yeah, there, and, that, and, and again, you know, there's a lot of companies that may say, oh, we don't have any THC in that. But then if you look at the actual product or an independent lab looks at it, you know, what they're saying isn't m matching up with what you're actually finding in the product. And realistically, it's not just CBD, but it's all botanicals. And that's why, you know, in my medical practice, I'm very selective about the brands that I work with because I want to make sure that the patients that I'm recommending products to are getting the same consistent product time and time again. Correct. And um, Dr. Swans, please tell us about uh, this company, Onyx and Rose. How did you start working with them? What would you like to say about this brand? Well, so it's, a, it's um, I, I technically don't work for the company. I'm on their advisory board and we're, the company's a new company. It's only been around for about four or five months. Um, and it's, it's a local to where I live here in Louisville, Kentucky. A friend of mine um, from high school is a part owner of the company. And so he came to me and the reality is I get approached by lots of companies about lots of different products, see if I'm interested in them. There's a few other companies in Louisville um, that were making a CBD product. I had gone and toured one of the facilities. I was actually using some of the product with my dad and I had tried it in one of these other companies. I, I, it seemed like the product was creating a feeling of intoxication, right? Like maybe it wasn't just the CBD. So that had been a personal experience. And when my friend Josh came to me and talked about the Onyx and Rose vision and what they were doing and about how they were going to do the production, it kind of was a no brainer for me. I was like, oh, wow, this is great. CBD is becoming something that more and more patients are asking me about. It's not something I have to bring up. And if they're interested in it, I want to make sure that I have a company and a product that's going to meet my standards. And so what was really great about Onyx and Rose is it is totally vertically integrated. And what that means is the company is controlling everything from the seeds and the plants, growing all the way to the finished product. 
They're not just buying some hemp right. from a farm up here and then from a farm over there. They're literally controlling every step of the way. They're, pat they're you know, doing the extraction, making sure it meets that 0.0% requirement in the, you know, broad spectrum CBD derived from hemp. And so I just, I felt really good about um, kind of the integrity and in what they were doing. And they asked me if I would, you know, be interested in helping to do some writing for them. And the other thing that I liked about it, they agreed with my approach for holistically supporting the individuals. They don't want to just push CBD on people. They want to help people transform their entire health picture. And that's what I'm passionate about. It's a lot of information and I am so happy about everything I have heard so far. Dr. Swans, please hold. We're going to go to a fast cut. People at home will be right back. Stay tuned. Welcome back, connected people. We are still connected with Dr. Peter Swans, who is talking to us all the way from Kentucky in the U.S. He has been kindly enough to accept this interview and take the, took the time to uh, explain to us and clarified several doubts that I had about CBD oil. Dr. Swans, I wish we had some more time and, and so we could hear a lot more of what you have to say, but we ha I have the last question for you. Uh, with your, all your experience and everything you have seen, what would be your message to actually those people that still resist to believe in the healing power of CBD? Thank you, Fabiana. That's a great question. And thank you again for this opportunity to be here with you. I appreciate it. I would love to chat in the future about any other topics related to health and healing. That's what I'm passionate about. So thank you. So, you know, there's been a lot of concern about marijuana throughout societies. And I think much of it is unjust. It's a lot of marketing. Um, the reality is alcohol and tobacco, which are both readily available and legal in the United States, are much more detrimental for an individual's health. And I think for the health of a society than marijuana has ever been. And I think we're starting to have a shift there. Um, certainly some people don't want to feel intoxicated the way that marijuana um, can make you. Um, other people are now realizing as the cultural taboo around it is shifting that they would actually rather feel that than feel intoxicated with alcohol. You know, alcohol really lowers inhibition. It's a depressant. People tend to make really bad decisions under the influence of alcohol. Most um, instances of domestic violence, of sexual assault are happening under the influence of alcohol significant i mean it's almost none happen with the you know with marijuana so i think there's just been a lot of negative marketing hype around marijuana what's interesting cbd actually kind of buffers the intoxicating effects of marijuana so somebody that has potentially eating an edible pot, you know, brownie in Colorado, and they're too intoxicated, taking some high potency CBD may actually help buffer that response. Oh, wow. So there's this kind of thing, yeah, there's this thing happening where there's people who enjoy marijuana for the intoxication effects, probably aren't wanting to use a lot of CBD because it may actually buffer, you know, that experience for them. So I think, you know, society, really needs to shift the way we talk about this um, and just be really direct because again people are so accepting of alcohol people still smoke tobacco yes. and the the health impact from these two things are just so you know so damaging to the individual and to the society and we need to stop locking people up for drugs, for nonviolent drug crimes. So, you know, my hope is with all of the progressive movements with the CBD, that's gonna just change the overall conversation that we're having about this medicine. Right, and as you said, it's not only, it's not taking CBD as a 
the one cure for, you know, it's something that you have to do it among other things. But what really concerns me is like, there are several new studies that show the, the benefits and the power of CBD. But sometimes the barrier, it's either uh, not only not having the knowledge or being a little ignorant on this subject, but also uh, having like moral issues and thinking that maybe you may not uh, help your uh, sick children or even your sick pet in order to, you know, to not use CBD. So that's why I really feel like there, we have to kind of find a way to get to through that wall that separates people from actually understanding that it is a plant as well as uh, chamomile is, what? as well as others, plants that are also, that we use it, we take it, uh, we're more open to use it, let's say. I, I, I agree, and I think the, you know, the availability, the way the governments are changing, the regulation and the legislation around it, that's a huge first step because, you know, I, I've known people who probably would have benefited but simply weren't interested in trying it because of the legal issues in the past. So hopefully as we start to pull down some of those legal barriers, it's gonna open up people's minds and hearts and souls to trying some stuff because we should be utilizing everything we can to help people that are suffering. Yes. Everything we can. And it's it's a shame that we don't. It's a shame that, you know, a pharmaceutical industry that very seldom is addressing the underlying causes, um, you know, is controlling the dialogue in the U.S. And, and I think we're starting to change that. And that's a very positive thing. Right. And also for the countries like here in Bolivia that we're not even close to get it legal. But, you know, it's the people that make laws pass. It's the people that really can make a change. So I really appreciate you taking the time to explain everything and to clarifying and actually sharing all your knowledge. Please uh, take a moment to share your social media and invite people to follow you. Go ahead. Sure, thank you again so much. Uh, my website is just drswans.com. It's D-R-S-W-A-N-Z.com. If you go to drswans.com slash connect, C-O-N-N-E-C-T, you can click there and I have links to all of my social media. Um, so you can follow my practice on Facebook, check me out on Instagram, I have a YouTube channel, I make videos and talk about health stuff, and I would love for people to uh, check me out there. Thank you so much, Dr. Swans. Always be well. And until next time with me, thank you again. Bye-bye. Thank you, my pleasure. It is important to maintain ourselves open to new ideas, options, and alternatives. The benefits and uses of hemp are not new news, but the positivity on its results after being used for certain conditions speaks high of how much we can benefit from it. So let's learn about it. Let's incorporate in our lives the beautiful gifts that nature provides us with. I will come back in a week with a new topic and a new friend. Nominate a person you love, you admire, or somebody you would like to support by writing me an email to conectadosbolivia24 at gmail.com. Let's get in touch and let the world know about them. Stay connected and until next time with me, goodbye.